Hey everyone, Metagross Freak here with the final episode of Toa Superior, looking at one of my personal favorite Toa of all time, Pohatu. Now honestly, the reason I saved this one for last was because I knew it was going to be hard. The Pohatu I redesigned from the 2015 model, um, as you can probably see from my uh, Pohatu update video, I'll probably post a link in the description. To me, is a perfect set. You know, we've got the we've got the knife, we've got the the boomerangs, we have all these cool spikes. The only thing I really took out was I replaced some of the uh, trans lime green, uh, sorry, the trans light green uh, bone pieces with some black ones, just so it would fit the theme better. And for my 2016 Pohatu, I'll admit he's not the perfect set. I ended up splitting his two his uh, his his united weapon into a kind of a chain flail and a short, uh, kind of a spear, and I switched the upper armor that goes on the top of the thigh with the arms, because I thought that we did better for his color scheme. But other than that, I think these are both great sets, so combining them into one set is going to be really difficult. I'm going to try to incorporate um, as many of these lime green bone pieces as I can, because I don't plan on using a lot of it on the outside, except for maybe the, uh, except for maybe the crystal armor. Without further ado, let's get started with 2015 and 16 Pohatu Fusion. As always, getting the mask of the way first, I really love both masks. I think they both really encapsulate Pohatu. However, I'm gonna go with the 2015 mask because I like that one a little bit more, but going with the 2016 head because I just like the 2016 head more. Um, technically, the original the original Pohatu had, I think it was like an orangish pink eyes. I, I don't have the right eye stock for that, but I'm going to go with blue. I like the blue a little bit more. Next up is the legs. Uh, the legs shouldn't be too surprising. They have a lot of similarities. Obviously, I'm going to go with silver feet and such. Um, I prefer the bones used for 2016. I like having the kind of the light... Uh, the, the trans light green bones underneath. So I'm essentially going to be assembling it kind of like that. However, I like the armor system that 2016's model has, but rather than using uh, the trans light green, tra or trans lime, I guess it's called, armor for the upper limb, I'm going to be using the burnt orange. I love the burnt orange color. It is just absolutely wonderful as an armor color. However, I'm going to be using the same silver pieces with the crystal armor for the lower limbs. One of the big flaws I had with the original Pohatu was that he didn't have, he wasn't tall enough and he didn't have pauldrons and he was very asymmetrical. So my version, I fixed that, making him symmetrical and I added pauldrons <laughs> and, you know, I actually took away the trans lime green because I, I, I wanted it to be more true to the original Pohatu, but looking at these, especially because it's a it's kind of the united version of the two, I really like having the trans light green. Minor change of plans, I actually did end up going with the black bones because it's just a slightly longer bone, and like I mentioned before, Pohatu suffers from being the shortest Toa for some reason syndrome. He's actually the same, about the same height as Anua, but Anua has these giant shoulders to make up for it. Um, so there we go. As always, I'm more of a fan of my 2015 limbs. However, one thing I like that the 2016 limbs have is this sandy tan, and I might save these for later. And I'm going to put them aside so I can show you after the model is done what it looks like with both sandy tan and with uh, the burnt orange for the major piece. As for the my 2015 limbs, I like the way they look. Um, I'm going to remove this silver armor, the silver armor additions for now, because I basically just want to switch out the black bones with trans lime green. I might end up overdoing it a little bit, but I I like the color, and I think considering the whole uh, Pohatu combination should be more in tune with their elements, I like the way it looks, and that's a personal preference for me thing. If you don't like the way it looks, that's fine. Um, you can choose which one you're going to use or not. 
There we go. There's one arm. That should actually look really familiar. There we go. There's my arms. For 2015 Pohatu, I like the waist articulation and I like this torso piece. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. I'll put this aside with the other sandy tan. Maybe we might incorporate that, but I'm definitely going to use the waist articulation and basically just slap on the armor here and the gearbox. Here's what I have for one shoulder. I'm going to show you how to build the other one and you can just mirror it. Um, now, Pohatu came with one of these three long axles and one of these uh, combination pin axle pieces. However, you're going to need one more of each. Let's just pull that from your parts bin because it's really easy to build. Basically, you take the pin axle combo, you place it right at the cross beam on the right side. You take one of the axles and you run it through the Hordika eye so it's right in the middle. And you insert that right above. And now to finish it off, you simply put on one of these two long axle, I guess you could call them lifts. I'm not exactly sure what these pieces are called, but you're only putting on one because remember, if you add two, you won't have enough clearance. Um, this has been a reoccurring theme in these models that I've been doing sorry, reoccurring theme, and that's because you need to have enough clearance for the 2015 chest plate. If you decide to go with the 2016 chest plate, you have plenty of clearance. You can add on one more on each side. There are four of these pieces that come with 2016 Pohatu, so you'll have the two necessary if you want to cover it. But with these shoulder pieces in, you can add one, two of these small bone pieces to add later for the pauldrons in a moment. And there you go. Just do that on both sides. Just do the shoulder pieces on both sides and you'll have a ready to go Pohatu torso. Okay, now how I would choose to finish up Pohatu is I would put these two large armor pieces on with these spikes over here for the pauldrons. and kind of just angle them so that they fit how you want. Remember that the gear piece, because it's identical, it's the identical uh, torso, let's see, the, excuse me, it's an identical gearbox to the one used for 2015 Pohatu. Just, you know, you want to have a little bit of clearance for that. I would add on the 2015 chest plate and then add weapons. And for me, this looks like a complete model. I'm happy with this, however, if you want to add the sandy tan pieces, here's what I would do. So remember that the use of the sandy tan pieces is completely up to you. However, if you choose to use the sandy tan pieces, I decide to switch out the pauldrons there. I actually think this looks pretty good. You do have to sacrifice the spikes, but I think it looks good considering it incorporates the burnt orange and the brown. It, whichever you use is up to you. I am going to try to see which I like better between the two, but um, if this is too many colors for you, I understand, just leave the sand, just leave the sandy tan off and keep the burnt orange with the combinations of the silver and the trans light green and the burnt orange. Pohatu does have a lot of colors in his model. However, if you're okay with that fourth color, I think this sandy, these sandy tan pieces actually look pretty good. Whichever pieces you decide to use for Pohatu's shoulders and and front, the pieces on the back are fairly simple. Like always, I'm taking the two trans light green Borak eyes from 2016 Pohatu, putting uh, two length red axles through them and putting them on the back. This is not necessary considering he doesn't really have a lot of trans green on his torso, but I'm choosing to add it in for a little bit of elemental flair. I just like the way that looks and they give a little bit more of a transition between the front and the back. It's kind of a uh, the curvature of the, of the body piece. However, we can't do traditional back armor because he doesn't come with one of the three length long lifts with a ball in the middle. However, he does come with one of these. It's a brown piece with a, well, a hole, just a regular hole. Uh, we can't add on any armor to it, unfortunately, but what we can do is make a, a weapon holster um, by plugging in one of these 
two long, uh, these double pegs, we can add on this piece used for 2016's torso, a combination peg axle separator. And you can add in 2016's spear piece. I really love this weapon. However, I don't view it as a kind of, I don't view it as a like standard, you know, hold always, always hold in the hand weapon. I view it kind of just holstered, kind of like how 2016, sorry, 2015's Pohatu held the uh, held the dagger. You can plug that in right where we had it originally, where the armor piece or where the original dagger would have attached to, and there you go. You just have to have it swinging a little bit to the side. Um, now it does have a good range of motion, so it can swing off to the side. I like the way that looks. If you don't, you can always have it switched around. 2015's boomerangs are arguably the coolest weapon a Toa Stone has ever wielded. And I'm glad they included those. And of course they have the two length black pins. So you can store them on the feet as well or use them as the like hoverboard jetter rings. But I love these boomerang pieces. They're just so cool. So here's just a quick look at what the gearbox and back assemblage looks like. I did add that one little stud eye just for a detail. I think it looks good. What do you think? There you have basically the build for Pohatu. I tried to see if I could incorporate the uh, the flail piece. I just wasn't able to get it to work with everything else going on with Pohatu. Sorry. So here is what the completed Pohatu looks like with the burnt orange and his working gearbox function with the boomerangs and again with the sandy tan. I think this one looks a lot more like a commando. I uh, definitely like the way it looks, though for those of you who prefer the burnt orange, I would understand why you would choose to go with that one instead.